Middle Eastern terrorism had arrived on American soil much earlier than September 11 attacks in 2001. In 1993, new elected President Bill Clinton addressed the nation about the World Trade Center bombing attack. Only eight years later, another just elected President George W. Bush would deliver a much more dramatic speech. 1993 bombing was a revenge for U.S. support for Israel against Palestine. It was a failed and forgotten attempt to take down the Twin Towers and kill an estimated 50,000 occupants in the buildings, resulting in incredibly more terrifying event than September 11 was. The attack was planned by a group of seven Muslim terrorists. Ramzi Youssef, professional bomb builder and mastermind of the Trade Center bombing. Mohammed Salameh, the driver of the group and Youssef's right hand. He entered the US on a six-month tourist visa in 1988, but overstayed illegally. Iyad Ishmoel was Youssef's trusted friend who would drive the vehicle carrying the bomb. Nidal Ayad, the most well-educated in the terrorist group who helped with coordinating the bombing. Mahmoud Abu Khalima, who worked as a New York City cab driver. Abdul Rahman Yassin, the only participant in the Trade Center bombing who was never arrested. He was set free after being cooperative by giving information to FBI. And Ahmed Ayai flew to US with a full Swedish password, shouting how his mother was Swedish. He served six months in prison and remained in contact with Yusef in the early stages of conspiracy. The months before the bombing, FBI and New York Joint Terrorism Task Force had been tracking Islamic terrorists and were very close in countering the planners of the attack. But they were too late due to lack of definitive proof. On September 1st, 1992, Ramzi Youssef from Afghanistan and Ahmed Ayai from Pakistan arrived illegally in the United States at the John F. Kennedy International Airport. Security discovered through a secondary inspection of Ayai's luggage bomb making instructions. He was immediately arrested, but the mastermind Youssef was allowed into the country with a false passport. Abdul Rahman Yassin was living next door with his sick mother and was giving bomb chemicals to Youssef. Youssef immediately began assembling the 680 kilograms gas and shade device at the residence in New Jersey. Youssef was planning to accomplish the most terrifying terrorist attack in the history of mankind. He hoped that the explosion would be strong enough to knock down the North Tower which would fall into South Tower, killing 50,000 people few seconds after the explosion, giving them no chance at all to evacuate the buildings unlike on 9-11. Mahmoud Salameh used his Chevinoa to transfer the nitric acid and urea to Youssef so he could construct the bomb. Youssef often called Iyad Ishmoel, a friend from Dallas, Texas, who would call Ahmed Ayai in prison and the three would together discuss the bomb development. The World Trade Center complex included Tower 1, Tower 2 and in addition the Marriott Hotel, buildings 4, 5, 6, 7 and 5 underground parking levels with shopping malls and subway system that connected New York and New Jersey. Terrorists decided to place the bomb in the underground parking lot to achieve the most devastating effect. On January 24, 1993, the loud impact was heard on New Jersey streets. Despite failing his driving test four times in a row, Salameh was a driver for the group and on January 24, he crashed his Chevy Noah, injuring himself and Ramzi Youssef. The plan was being put at the risk with Youssef being hospitalized for a week and the bomb in development but not strong enough. On February 16th, Salameh and Idal Ayad, the most well-educated in the group, rented a car to observe the underground parking lot and the World Trade Center so Ayad could draw a floor plan. On February 22nd, Ayad Ishmoel arrives from Texas at Jersey City to meet with his friend Youssef, released from hospital. Not risking the process of bombing, Instead of poor driver Salameh, Ishmoel would drive the car carrying the bomb. On February 23rd, Salameh rents a yellow rider van. February 24th, Ayad orders a three large tanks of compressed hydrogen. February 25th, the terrorist group creates a deadly mixture of 1,200 pounds of urea crystals with numerous gallons of nitrate acid to straighten the bomb. On February 26th, 1993, Youssef and Ishmoel drove a yellow rider van into the B2 level garage beneath the World Trade Center. 
The group lights the fuse with a cigarette lighter and rushes to a getaway vehicle. Seconds before the explosion, the group gets to a safe zone. At 12.18 pm, the bomb exploded and created a massive eruption enough to come through a four levels of parking lots carving out of a 100 foot crater, cutting off the main electrical power line, killing six people and leaving over 1000 people injured. The bomb caused a thick smoke to rise all the way to 93rd floor of the boat towers, making evacuation difficult for building occupants. Above the 100th floor, the people were evacuated by helicopter from the roof. Nobody knew what exactly happened. ATV, FBI and NAPD arrived at the scene. At the ground zero, victims were found dead sitting in their car buried under 12 feet of concrete. Structural support of the lower levels was severely weakened so any removal of debris might cause floors of Vista Hotel to collapse on rescue workers. Soon, investigators came up with the major discovery at the ground zero. It was part of a vehicle that was carrying the bomb and series of digits were stamped into metal debris so the investigators immediately rushed the debris to forensic laboratory to discover the meaning of digits. With the sun set over the city, Ramzi Youssef the same day boarded an airplane to Pakistan. He failed to take down the 110 floors Twin Towers, but had the van been parked closer to the Twin Towers poor concrete foundations, the plan might have succeeded. At forensic laboratory, digits stamped into part of a vehicle were found out to be a confidential vehicle identification number. Typing this number into computer gave FBI detailed information about the vehicle and its owner. The vehicle was a Ford Ecoline van that was reported stolen in the rental agency in Jersey City. Mahmoud Salameh, the second main organizer of the bombing, had reported the van stolen. After he returned to get a refund of his $400 deposit, FBI agents arrested him. Agents learned that Salameh purchased a Charles Airline ticket abroad because this was the only ticket he could afford. He came up with the idea of reporting the van stolen so he could get his deposit back by a ticket for adult. Salameh led the FBI agents to Yusef's apartment. Abdul Yassin, who lived the floor below, hears the footsteps and looks through his door. His escape has failed. It was 140 hours after the bombing, enough time for terrorists to leave the United States. The group left the apartment, but also clear evidence of the bombing. In June 1993, the FBI ongoing surveillance operation discovered another planned terrorist attack. Abdul Rahman and his followers were constructing another bomb in garage in Queens. After a failed attempt to take down the Twin Towers, this new group of terrorists were targeting Holland and Lincoln Tunnels Empire State Building, George Washington Bridge, and United Nations Headquarters. Each bomb was meant to be detonated at 5 minutes apart. But the terrorists were caught by FBI camera and sentenced to life in prison. The FBI interviewed hundreds of witnesses at locations where World Trade Center bombing was being planned. Some of 206 witnesses mentioned seeing Mahmoud Abu Halima with Mohammed Salameh at the Jersey City storage facility used to prepare the explosives. Abu Halima flew to Saudi Arabia where he was captured and tortured by Egyptian police and handed back to America. Ahmed Ayai was released from prison just three days after the bombing but then re-arrested and sentenced to 240 years. Idal Ayad was arrested in his office. FBI agent John O'Neill was essential in coordinating the successful capture of Youssef in Pakistan. Ramzi Youssef was arrested in February 1995 and extradited to New York City. The most devastating terrorist attack at the time left the nation in shock. The overall cost to repair the damage resulted by bombing was $315 million. The fire alarm for the entire complex needed to be replaced also. Some components were still underway in September 2001. John O'Neill became obsessed with the World Trade Center bombing and learned how serious threat was Osama Bin Laden. He lived his dream being an FBI agent. 
He attempted to alert the US government of another terrorist attack as early as 1995 or January 2001, but nobody took his words seriously. O'Neill left the FBI and took a job as a head of security at the World Trade Center on August 23rd, 2001. He talked to his friend Chris Isham about the job. Isham said, at least they're not going to bomb it again like in 1993. O'Neill replied, they'll probably try to finish the job. On September 11, John O'Neill heroically sacrificed his own life while helping others to evacuate the North Tower. September 11 attacks went unforeseen by the US intelligence and the law enforcement agencies. It seems that 1993 bombing was not taken too seriously.